Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Rule the Waves. It's July 1909, and we're playing as Japan, currently at peace. Tensions are starting to tick back up again, and we have some destroyers and battle cruisers under construction. Our first dreadnought ships are two Naga-class battle cruisers. You can see here the Naga has... Um, 10 12 inch guns and 16 4 inch guns as its, as its secondary battery with a relatively light armor plate um, at also very fast speeds of 26 knots. In this video, what we're going to be looking at doing is perhaps building some new ar armored cruisers. Our current armored cruisers are starting to get a little bit out of date, uh, so are our actually, so are our light cruisers as well. Um, but the next thing we're going to be looking at today is some heavy cruisers. Uh, that's what I'd really like to focus on. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to design a brand new ship today. We're going to go ahead and set it as a CA. We're going to build it locally because we can build up to 20,000 ton vessels. And we're just going to auto design the ship at first. Um, you can see here the auto design uh, designed a 8 gunned 12 inch. That seems wrong. Okay, we're going to bring it down to a 10-inch main battery. I think 10-inch, well, 8 inches was usually the standard for heavy cruisers. The German pocket battleships had 11. Um, hmm, let's go with 9, actually, because that was, well, actually, why don't we compare the guns we have, first of all. Our 10-inch gun is still a negative 1 quality, so if you actually remember, our 9-inch guns are superior to our 10. So we're going to go with 10-inch guns. Um, we actually developed a superimposed X turret, which allows us to have a superimposed rear turret, um, whereas our other turrets cannot yet be superimposed. I don't think we can have a B turret superimposed yet. Yeah, see, we don't have that technology. So we're going to go ahead and we'll bring that X turret back online as a superimposed turret. Um, and what a superimposed turret, let's see if we can do it as a triple. Yes, we can. Okay, so what a superimposed turret is, is basically it's where you have two turrets and one is elevated a little bit so it can shoot over the top. And it really gives you some advantages as far as designing. You know, you don't have to worry about staggering broadside or turrets along the side of the vessel. If you do that, it means you can only shoot the gun when the ship is facing that direction. Um, or not facing that direction, but running broadside that to that direction. So a lot of the early Dreadnought-class battleships actually had one turret in front, one in aft, and then kind of some along the sides. And actually, um, our current Dreadnought that we have under construction... Whoops. Our current Dreadnoughts that we have under construction in the United States are laid out that way. You'll see the two turrets on the side, and then you've got the turrets fore and aft. It was actually more common to kind of have a hexagon pattern where you have, like, one here, one here, one here, and one here. So you'd have, like, half your half your broadside almost would be limited to firing in one direction, and the superstructure of the ship would be in the way the other direction. So the superimposed turret allows you to kind of solve that problem. And when you see battleships that are all superimposed, those are referred to generally as super dreadnoughts because now they can much more effectively uh, locate, you know, their fire. Um, all the guns can fire as long as you're not, you know, going head on, like having your T crossed, all the ships can fire in the same direction. Um, so right now we only have one turret that we can develop that's superimposed, but that is nice. Um, it actually allows us to have, where did our turrets go? Huh. It actually allows us to have, um, more guns. And the fact that we have the triple turret researched, um, means that again, we can go ahead and get more heavy guns on this ship. One of the other things you may have noticed with our construction of the battle cruisers is turbines are becoming more or less uniform. And what a turbine does is it makes your warship much more efficient. You save a ton of weight and machinery. Uh, the propulsion engines before turbines were called triple reciprocity, or repro I, I can't pronounce it, but triple reciprocating engines, which were basically these gigantic engines engines that almost, and I'm not an engineer, but basically they kind of processed um, the heat and the energy three times. So they were relatively efficient, but they were ginormous. It's basically stacking three engines and kind of connecting up, up together where one would kind of process the exhaust of the other. 
That's my basic understanding of it. So there were these gigantic engines that were relatively fuel efficient, but incredibly heavy and took up tons of space. A turbine was a fraction of the size of that and allowed you to get much more speed out of your ship uh, than was otherwise possible. So right now you can see here we've got nine heavy nine inch guns, those high velocity nine inch guns. I'm gonna see about adding some midship turrets as well. Um, so do a port midship wing and yeah, superimposed air for CA. Not really? The superimposed turret X is only available for. Oh, lame. Oh, man. So we can't. We can only have those superimposed turrets for our battleships, which we don't have a big enough dockyard really to build a domestic dreadnought at this point. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to have a forward triple turret. We'll have an aft triple turret. And now we can't have triple turrets on the sides of the ship yet. So what we'll do is we'll put some midship turrets. They're going to have to be doubles, but they can be double turrets along the side, which actually we can't do right now with heavier than 10-inch guns for our battleships. But we can basically make a super heavy cruiser with those understanded limitations of having, um, you know, turrets where you can't fire everything all at once. So, let's see, how do we want to do this? Well, we can go ahead and have port midship wing, and we have to do the um, double turret, by the way. Starboard wing, oh wait, no, starboard midship wing. Okay, so you can see there we've got... Um, that way we've got 10 heavy guns right now on the ship. But we can actually add more midship turrets as well. I don't think we've... Yeah. Okay. What else? Do we have more midship turrets we can do? I don't think we've got that researched. Or do we? Sweet. So we've got a aft centerline superimposed turret. We've got a V turret, which can be researched apparently. Um, which is kind of like a rear superimposed, just in a different, slightly different location. Okay, what else can we do? I'm trying to make this this bad boy just as big and bad as possible. Aft superimposed, port wing, forward center line. We don't want that. We don't want the forward center line. Port wing, starboard wing. Okay, so we update that. And then port aft wing, starboard aft wing. So look at this bad boy. Okay, it's going to be way too heavy, but look at this ridiculous cruiser um two two four six eight ten twelve fourteen twenty heavy guns oh that would be such an awesome ship to build um but it's too heavy right now it's over 1200 tons uh it's seriously overweight i guess we can get rid of the aft superimposed aft center line superimposed we'll see if that saves some weight it does save about 500 tons so we've got, we've still got 
quite a bit of gun, quite a bit of firepower, this behemoth of a cruiser, but it's also going to be incredibly expensive to build. Um... Probably save some on armor by cutting the armor down a bit on the turrets just because there's so many turrets. It would save quite a bit. We've also got 16 4 inch guns and casemates as our secondary battery. Okay. And. Deck armor down to 2 inches. Deck extended to one. I'll drop the turrets to eight. They're only nine inch turret guns anyway. So we drop those down. Maybe we bump it up to 26. No, we can't make 26 knots. 25 knots should be good. And we can bump up the weight, bump down the weight a bit, and maybe save some cost. So 18,200 tons. Less technology than torpedo protection than it allows. Well, I'll bump the weight back up. All okay. So this is our new ship. It's an 18,300 ton heavy cruiser. We'll call it a Tubuca class. It's basically a dreadnought uh, heavy cruiser, which actually would be similar, at least in concept, to the Blucher class uh, armored cruiser that the Germans built. Um, it was really outclassed and actually was sunk at the Battle of Dodger Bank by the time it came into service. Um, let's see here. So at 18,300 tons, it's heavier than our previous battleships and more heavily armored. It is going to cost 2.6 million to build. We're going to have an initial build. Ooh, that's all of our money. Um... Yeah, we're going to build a ship. Uh, we'll, I say, well, I want to build two of them, but I don't know if I've got the funds to do that. So we've got two heavy cruisers laid down. You can see we're going to run out of money next turn because it's 4.9 million. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to halt the Katori class. You can see there that'll cut our deficit a bit. It's only got five more months till completion though, but we're gonna halt the construction on that. And we'll halt the construction on, I just wanted to lay it down. So we had two under construction, but we'll halt the construction on the other heavy cruiser. And then two of the newer destroyers. So that gets us back to almost even. We're building new docks and we'll go ahead and uh, progress a turn. A new government wants to reduce naval spending in favor of social programs. What's your comment? You are only the admiral and the politicians are in charge. Tension goes down, but so does your budget. Try to get the proposal watered down, which decreases budget. Get the Navy League to protest against the proposal. It increases tensions. And we just researched an improved 8-inch gun as well. Okay, so we just lobbied against um, declining the naval budget. And we've also made advances as anti-submarine warfare technology. Okay. Our agents seem to have been caught in Germany. Make the agent a national hero. Increases your prestige, but increases tensions. And we just researched Krupp cement. Fleet tactics. Scouting force. Okay. Still no one's commissioned a battleship, although you can see the Italians have laid down a third battleship, and the U.S. now has two of their own dreadnoughts laid down. Interestingly enough, the U.S. would have the most dreadnoughts being built of anyone because they've got two being built there. They've also got two of uh, Japanese being built. Um, oh, and they've also laid down a battlecruiser. So Italy's building four. The U.S. is building three, if you include battlecruisers. Russia only one. France two. Germany three. And Brit or Germany... Yeah, three and Britain three. Um, that, those heavy cruisers are expensive. That might have been a waste of money, really. But I feel like we needed some newer heavy cruisers. So, Let's see, we've got some ships that should be coming off the line here soon. 
main battery wing turrets are now just researched. So it will allow us to build a better main class dreadnought, which I do intend to do. Um, having issues with some of our ship's design speed. The Italian government is interested in buying the rights to oil firing. They'll give us 3.6 million. They're probably going to research it themselves. They don't have access to oil, and neither do we at this point. So by all means, I don't care. We'll share that technology, because it doesn't mean anything, because Italy doesn't have access to oil, and neither do we. Um, also keeps the Italians happy with us. We could potentially sign an alliance with them as well at some point. It's an event that could trigger. So the British have commissioned the first of their dreadnoughts into service. They're now the only country with any dreadnoughts in service. Um, ours are still a year away. With the completion of some of those ships, I'm going to go ahead and unhalt the construction on the Katori class battleship. Although, based on its armaments, it might be better just to scrap the damn thing. Um, that puts us in the red a bit, but it's okay because we've got other ships coming off the line. Go ahead and advance one more turn. You can see several destroyers were just finished. Actually, we'll go ahead and uh, resume construction on the other destroyers we had halted. It does put us negative three million. There's been an uprising in a Chinese province in the f in, in the focus of a great power colonial ambitions. We need to send a force to evacuate our nationals and protect our interests. What size ship? Ex what size expeditionary force should we send? If we send a battleship. It dramatically increases tensions, but also gives us massive prestige bonuses. A cruiser. What else would it do? Um, also increases our budget. A cruiser would increase tensions significantly as well and give us prestige. No extra budget. A gunboat, so everything increases everything. Oh boy, we're almost at war again. We did get additional funding though. I don't know if we want to be at war with France. Ooh, I don't know. Our fleet is so outclassed at the moment. Um, but our prestige is going up, which is nice. That was not smart. Um, in service. I don't want to scrap ships if we're about to go to war. We're almost at war with Germany. We're basically at war with France. But if there's anyone we were going to fight, I think France would be the best option. What's the current setup here? They've got a fleet of one battleship in West Africa. And then... They have three battleships in Southeast Asia. So yeah, I mean, their ability to project power against us is pretty limited. Um, I think it might not be a bad idea to reinforce Formosa, though, because we don't have much in Southeast Asia. We just have some outclassed destroyers and cruisers. The problem is our forces there are limited... Um, our base capacity is relatively limited. We don't really have the funds to up some of those bases. So that's going to make fighting there difficult. More Balkan fighting. France. We're at war with France. War declared. Japan and France are now in a state of war. A surprise attack. Um, I don't want to launch a surprise attack with two light cruisers and five destroyers. Well, we could try a torpedo attack with our destroyers. Maybe we'll do that. Well, it certainly will probably fail. Probably. Still, it might be worth... Can we save right now? I would like to save.
Mm, we're going to decline the attack. We're going to switch over to fleet support. And we are now at war with France. So, um, that gives us a nice healthy boost in our budget. Um, I think we can also try and accelerate construction. I'm worried the U.S. is going to try and um, keep, keep our ships, basically. Uh, maybe keep them from us. I guess we'll find out. I don't know if accelerating construction is really going to do anything on some of those ships. doesn't seem like it. Um, but now that we're also at war, the other thing we're going to need to do... Well, you know what? Um, I'm not gonna. I'm going to launch some attacks on the French, and I am gonna fight this war out because I think I can win this one and be in good shape. But what we are also going to do is we're gonna cut this video off, and we will look at the next video, our war against France. I'm gonna do everything I can to keep Germany out of the war and everybody else as well. If I can just fight France, I think I've got a good chance of winning. But we're gonna go ahead and save the game here. We've obviously got some ships we need to bring back into commission as well. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go from there. And I appreciate everyone too tuning in until next time guys though this is the historical gamer saying thank you for watching and i'm out